Hi everyone, welcome to Tom Sands Guitars Workshop here in Yorkshire, England. Today we've got a brand new guitar and I'm going to talk you through it. This is uh, my Model S guitar, as you've probably seen in previous videos. It's the smallest guitar that I offer. It has a 14 inch lower bow and it's a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length with 12 frets to the body. And this particular guitar has a cutaway as well for when you are doing your face melting shred solos, which everyone should try on an acoustic guitar. Just a brief overview of the uh, bits and pieces that we've got going on with this, this guitar. We've got the Swiss Moon Spruce face. We've got a Madagascar Rosewood fingerboard, head cap, bridge, and bindings as well. We've got a very special set of Mega Master Turbo Grade Koa, beautifully flamed. I'll go into that in a minute. We've got a Honduran Mahogany Neck, Koa Backstrap, and some Robson Tuners as well. The decorative elements on this guitar are patina copper, uh, which gives it this beautiful blue and gold color. Uh, we've got that in the headstock, and we've also got a little bit in the end graft there as well. So the people that grow and supply this spruce out in Switzerland pay really close attention to the lunar cycles. The moon has a very direct effect on the moisture content at any given time in the spruce. Um, and so it wants to be harvested when the moisture content or the sap levels in the spruce are really, really low. It helps with the drying process. It lends itself to producing wood, which is of a much higher quality, much more even stiffness, um, exactly what you want for a guitar top. The koa on this guitar is unlike any koa I have ever seen. Um, it comes from our friends Josh and Elaine, who you've heard us talk about in the past. Um, Josh Johansson, he's a third generation logger from Hawaii. Um, if you want to know more about their business and their process of sustainably harvesting koa, we did a um, interval episode, our podcast with Josh um, last year, and you can check it out. There's also an article over on the blog as well, so make sure you check that out. The figure that you can see here in the koa is what's called stress curl. Whenever the tree is under stress as a result of the, the, the weight and the compression of the tree causing this kind of concertina effect, either at the base of the tree where it's splaying out or perhaps where the trunk separates and goes off into a separate limb, branch, what have you, produces this amazing, amazing curl. What's also really nice about this koa is that it's got some really great color variation as well. We've got some really nice sapwood down here. We've got some really deep, bright oranges, some yellows, even some purple in there as well, and of course some really nice browns. Just a really beautiful piece of color, exactly what you want, and sadly, pretty hard to get hold of these days. The fingerboard and bridge, as I've said, are Madagascar Rosewood. This is what I refer to as my Rio uh, Rosewood stash. It's not Brazilian Rosewood, unfortunately, but it has a look almost indistinguishable from Brazilian rosewood. We've got some really nice landscape spider webbing figure, which refers to these inky lines that run through the fingerboard. The fingerboard matches the bridge as well, and we've got a matching head cap as well, just to continue that color theme all the way through. And as I said, matches on the binding as well. As you know, I do a lot of work with copper on my guitars. Um, on here, we've got the blue and gold Sistine copper. This is created by treating the copper with all sorts of different chemical solutions in fuming chambers. It takes a few days, but the, the result is just to die for. I'm really happy with the results that I'm getting. The copper theme is also echoed through the fretboard. For the first time ever, I've done fret position markers on the face of the, the fingerboard. So we've got a copper ring. Uh, with some of the patina copper inset and then filled flush with the surface with resin. The neck on this guitar is custom carved to my client's specifications. He has a Irvin Samoji guitar that he really, really likes the feel of. So working with him, I was able to duplicate not only the profile of the back of the neck, but also the thickness um, all the way up the neck as well. So hopefully, he will feel right at home with this guitar straight away. One of the things that I've recently started doing with my guitars, which I think really improves the feel, the playability of the instrument, is to put quite heavy round over on the fingerboard. So it kind of transitions off the back of the neck and then actually starts to curve back over in this direction. So that if you're a kind of player who plays with a thumb over the top, 
you're not getting a sharp edge digging into the back of your thumb. I've also got my um, very delicately shaped ball end frets, uh, which are also inset slightly from the edge of the fingerboard. So as you run your hand up and down the neck, the frets feel as if they're not even there. Final few little details, we've got a uh, hand sculpt bone nut, so each little string is on its tiny its own tiny little pedestal. We've got a magnetic uh, truss rod cover and we've also got a um, extra wide bone saddle and each string has been individually compensated for perfect uh, intonation. So we've talked about the specs, now it's time to talk about the sound. At this point in the video, we would neatly transition over to a video of either Will McNichol or Connor Thomas. At this point in time, we are not able to do that. And so I've taken it upon myself to uh, play a little something for you. So today we're going with a one mic setup. This is, uh, I'm using one of my STC-1S microphones from Sontronics. This is a small um, condenser microphone. Quite often in guitar videos, you'll see two of these, what's known as a matched pair. The idea being that you're getting a stereo image of the guitar. Today we're keeping things really simple. Quite often what can happen when you've got two microphones is that you sometimes get the signal from the guitar, that's the waves from the guitar hitting the microphones at slightly different uh, periods in time and you get what's called phasing, where the sound waves cancel each other out. And sometimes, if you're not very, very careful, you can end up getting a completely inaccurate representation of the guitar. Given that at this moment in time, we have four Model S's in the workshop, I wanna do a comparison, so I wanna keep the microphone set up as simple as possible. So. Just the one small condenser microphone, pencil microphone from Sontronics, and we've got it pointed at the 12th fret, um, and it's about six to seven inches away from the guitar. So one of the things that I always talk to clients about is how to listen to a guitar and how to describe what it is that you're hearing. A universal vocabulary for sound doesn't really exist, so we have to talk in objective terms. We have to talk in uh, terms of physics and acoustic dynamics and all this kind of thing, rather than this guitar sounds warm, it sounds bright, because that might mean a different thing to you, might mean a different person thing to the next person. So bullet points, things to think about when you're listening to any guitar. First thing is volume. Obviously that's difficult in a recording, as is the next thing that I like to think about, which is projection. That's volume at a distance from the instrument. We want to talk about attack. Now attack is somewhat subjective. It refers to the period of time between when the string is plucked to when it reaches its maximum amplitude, uh, its maximum volume. We want to think about sustain, how long that note takes to decay, how long it rings out. We want to think about evenness and balance. In the way that I think about them, they're two very different things. So evenness is loudness from string to string. Is there any string which is jumping out at you more than others? A good guitar should have even loudness from string to string. Balance, how does the guitar sound across the tonal range from bass, mid-range, and treble? Next, I like to think about responsiveness and dynamic range. So responsiveness refers to how much you have to get in versus how much you get out. It's to do with the efficiency of the guitar, and that directly ties into the dynamic range. Is there headroom? Headroom is how much the guitar is able to give without distorting, combined with uh, how much it can give at very low volumes with very a very light touch. A guitar with broad dynamic range has loads of headroom so you can really dig in and still get clear, punchy tone, but it also means that you're getting a nice sweet sound when played very, very lightly. All of these elements tie into the timbre of the instrument, or if you're from Yorkshire, the timbre. This is a slightly difficult term to uh, to define, but it refers, I guess, to uh, the character of the guitar. And lastly, I want to think about note separation. Note separation refers to if you're playing a, a chord on a guitar, are you able to hear each string doing its own thing within that chord, or does it all kind of mush together and you lose detail and clarity? A really beautifully balanced, even, uh, responsive guitar with great dynamic range should have perfect and audibly noticeable string separation. So hopefully that gives you uh, a little 101 masterclass on exactly how to listen to and how to appreciate 
a guitar. So with all those factors in mind, I'm gonna play a short piece, um, a few different chords, single notes, to really um, allow you to assess this instrument objectively. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video all about um, this brand new Model S guitar in Swiss Spruce and Koa. I really hope you've enjoyed it and found it educational as well. For more information on Tom Sands Guitars, please visit our website, tomsandsguitars.com. You can find us on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we've got the podcast, search for Tom Sands Guitars wherever you get your podcasts. We're also on Medium as well if you like the written word. And I think that's about it. Thanks so much.